Hey guys, it's Miles here from MSS Moncton, and uh, today we are going to be doing an introduction to fitness concepts, specifically terminology, and how it applies to HEMA. In my experience, people who get into HEMA, they, they start thinking about a couple of things, right? First off, you know, maybe they're getting into HEMA because they, they want to get in better shape. Right? That's certainly not why everyone gets into HEMA, but some people do, right? The second thing that I see a lot is people who get into HEMA and they then start to ask themselves about their personal fitness and start saying, hey, well, what can I do to, you know, to benefit my personal fitness that will benefit my HEMA? So, in our club here in Moncton, um, you know, I, I really like programs, so we're going to be uh, starting to uh, work on a program that's really going to be focusing on lower body conditioning, okay? And I want you guys to think about this video as the session zero for that. Um, if you play D&D, I think you know what I'm talking about, session zero. If you don't, I'll break it down for you, right? Um, it's just setting that base level of, of how things are going to go. I want you guys to understand the methodology so that you get to a point where you can apply it to designing your own routines. Right? So, you know, I, I can sh show you a bunch of stuff, but if you don't kind of understand the core concepts behind it, and if we aren't speaking the same language, then the benefit that you get won't, won't be optimal. You know, the, the benefit that you get will be optimal if we take the time to work through these concepts and then when um, and then when the series of lower body conditioning videos come out, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. So, let's get started. So, the first concept that we're going to be talking about is cross-training, okay? And has, here's how I'm going to be uh, trying to explain it to you. So, right now we're, we're working on rower saber, right? But here's the thing, if you get up every day, you decide you're going to train HEMA non-stop. You get up every day, you go outside, you break out your saber, um, you swing it, you do your drills that way. You know, you're actually not going to get the optimal result. Um, and this is why, because you're going to be overtraining. You're going to be overtraining your sword arm. And that's something that I really want you to watch out for. Um, when you're when you're doing he HEMA is overtraining your sword arm. Um, your elbow is going to tell you all about it. Your shoulder is going to tell you about it. Your wrist is going to tell you about it. When you overtrain, you run the risk of injury. Injury is going to lay you up, and you're not going to be able to enjoy your HEMA. So don't overtrain, right? Um, your body needs time to recover. We're going to talk about that more a little bit later in the video. But back to cross training. So if we can't go out and swing the sword every day, but we want to be working on our fitness and our HEMA, then we need to be looking at other ways we can train our bodies, right? And, well, over the course of this video, I'm going to explain how we're going to choose the most efficient ways to do that and how they apply to us by looking at different styles of training, different types of movement, and how we can plug them into HEMA. Cross training. The next concept that I want you to think about is um, RPE, rate of perceived exertion, okay? And you can just kind of think about this as working inside your ability while pushing it. Um, the RPE system is really great for beginners though, okay? Um, because it provides you a chart. Okay, there's all kinds of charts out there for RPE, um, search for rate for rate of perceived exertion, and uh, you're going to see these charts, and it's, it's going to break it down really easily for you and help you relate what's happening in your training to your body, right? And as you learn more about that, you're going to be able to make better decisions about how you're training. Um, because there are times when you want to just go 100%, right? There's times where you don't want to go 100%. And you have to know what your 100% is, you have to know what your 40% is. So the RPE system is an easy way that you, can, that you can apply to yourself that is going to help you determine the difficulty of the exercises that you're doing. Next up is the warm-up, okay? And we're going to kind of, you know, try to go through this sort of in a, in a way that you would actually do, do an exercise as best as I can, <laughs> all right? First up, we're going to do the warm-up, okay? Um, doing the warm-up, we're going to be increasing blood flow and body temperature, okay? Um, you know what? Your muscles are full of blood. 
that's where the oxygen comes from, <laughs> all right? Um, so you need to wake that up. You need to start to get those systems working before you go and start your hard workout, right? By taking the time to do your warm up, you're going to actually make sure that you can work harder during your real workout, okay? Um, and beyond that, this is a good opportunity to work on, on balance. This is um, a good opportunity to do some stretching, some light cardio, um, you know, a little bit of coordination stuff. And I think we're really going to be looking at balance drills as a, as a big part of our warm up and some dynamic stretching as well, because dynamic stretching is, is, is the classic warm ups. But I do want you doing balance drills. And I think that's a way that we can, you know, cross train and make the training a little bit more efficient. So next up, we're going to talk about all the different kinds of exercises, okay? Well, not all the different kinds of exercises, but we're going to define some different kinds of exercises, okay? Um, because, you know, I think that sometimes people will, will, you know, join an activity like this, start doing HEMA, and they'll just kind of like go to what they know or what their idea of, of, you know, like good exercise is, right? But I want to define these different types for you so we can talk about their strengths and their weaknesses. And first up is going to be aerobic exercise, okay? So with aerobic exercise, aerobic is actually referring to uh, an energy system. It's referring to your body gaining energy um, from, uh, from oxygen in your bloodstream, right? And, um, well, aerobic energy is going, think of that as like a long burn, okay? Think about that as steady state cardio, okay? Where you get your heart rate up to a certain point and you maintain it. So that would be like jogging, you know, bikes, um, thing, thing, things of that nature, okay? And here's the thing, they're actually suboptimal. Um, for HEMA, they're really suboptimal. Um, if, you're, if you're, you know, training for like a hardcore endurance thing, then they're optimal um, for HEMA they're suboptimal, right? So we're actually not gonna be doing a lot of aerobics, really just as warm-ups. We're not gonna be doing a lot of steady state cardio, um, but you still can be working on your cardio through sprints. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. When we talk about high intensity interval training, well, you know, that really gets your heart rate going too, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So next up, we have anaerobic exercise, all right? So anaerobic exercise, this is high intensity, all right? Um, and again, it's referring to an energy system and it's your um, body breaking down glucose uh, for energy, right? So where you're going to get this is, um, is going to be really, for us, it's gonna be a lot of strength training is where we're gonna be getting our anaerobic exercise. Okay, um, high intensity, weights, body resistance, um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty much it. So it's short bouts of high intensity, um, you know, specifically we're going to be looking at, uh, at resistance training as, um, as a way to achieve that. Next up, we're going to be talking about isometrics. Isometrics, think about yoga, think about planks, think about wall sits, okay? You're going to be holding a position for a period of time. Um, strength endurance, and you know what, actually mental toughness. Um, I hate wall sits so much, they make me feel like such a wiener. Just tells me I need to get mentally tougher because I know I have more gas in the tank. And isometrics are really good for that. Beyond that, um, light yoga is really good um, for your cool down um, and also your, um, your uh, active recovery. But we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Next up, this is a big one that we're gonna be talking about, okay? We're gonna be looking at plyometrics. All right, and plyometrics, jumping, <laughs> basically. Um, but I'll, I'll expand on that a little bit, okay? Um, with HEMA, you know, that long haul cardio isn't as important. You know, you, you need to have gas in the tank, but it's not as important as, um, as being explosive. Right? And plyometrics is where we're going to be really training our explosiveness, right? And it's where we're really going to be isolating those movements. And um, I think you're going to find some really cool stuff in there. And it's, I think it's going to be a total game changer for, for your HEMA. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to be doing lots of, lots of jumping things, <laughs> All right? And you are going to love them. 
And finally, the last type of exercise that we're going to be talking about is going to be strength training, okay? And strength training, think of that as resistance training, okay? Think of that as weights, you know, doing bicep curls with your barbells, uh, you know, you're doing squats, you're doing the bench press. That's, that's what we're going to be, you know, using that a little bit more for. But for our next series, we're really just going to be focusing on things that you can, that you can do at home without equipment, okay? Um, I th actually think that we're better off kind of focusing for about two months on, on body resistance and, um, and I suppose just building up our general level of fitness that we don't encounter problems with injury when we start to introduce weights to the mix. Next up, we have high intensity interval training. Um, I really like high intensity interval training for HEMA. I think that it's it, it's kind of the ideal sort of sort of mix for uh, for HEMA, right? Um, and basically, hit hit high intensity interval training is actually a really straightforward training concept uh, concept that's extremely efficient and has um, really marked benefits with its afterburn effect. Um, so what you're going to do with, um, with high intensity interval training is going to be a one to four ratio, okay? One high intensity um, interval to four low intensity rest intervals, all right? So what's an interval? An interval is just a period of time, okay? It's, it's, it's a set of movements, all right? So if you do 20 push-ups, then that's an interval. If you then do 20 squats, that's an interval. If you take 30 seconds to rest, that's an interval. If you do 20 push-ups, that's an interval. All right, and basically what we're going to be doing with uh, with HIT is going to be doing one minute of high intensity, really super high intensity cardio. We want to be operating at 90 to 100 percent capacity when we're doing that. And then for the next four minutes, we want to do four different exercises that are going to be strength training exercises, right? And those strength training exercises um, will be more isolated and won't be putting you at that 10 RPE, that 10 rate of perceived exertion, which is the point where you just feel like you can't continue anymore. All right? So this will start to become pretty clear as we do it, but it's a fantastic way of training. Um, specifically, since we're going to be looking at a lot of plyometrics, a lot of explosiveness training, um, these really mesh really well together. And beyond that, you're going to see a real benefit in how it burns fat, all right? So with steady state cardio, you know, you're, you're burning fat over that period of time. Um, you know, and, and afterwards, with high intensity interval training, you're getting the benefit of, um, of you know, damaging your muscles enough that they, need, that they need to be repaired. You're also getting the end of it, the benefit of really turning up your metabolism, and it will stay going for a day or two after you do, do a HIIT routine. So you're going to be getting that, um, you're going to be getting that, um, that type of stimulus that you really need to create muscle growth um, with the resistance, the strength training, but you're also going to be getting some really great fat burning benefits as well. And of course, the format plugs in really, really well to plyometrics, which, uh, you know, we're really focusing on that explosiveness, right? Can we get into measure? Once we get into measure, can we get offline? You know what I mean? Can we propel our body forward fast enough to be threatening and hard to react to? All right, and that's, what, that's kind of what we're working on here, guys. Next up, we'll talk about a compound exercise, okay? So if you think about the last series of video that we did, there was uh, one movement that, that we did quite a lot, okay? And it was the squat into the parry, into the overhow, squatting, parrying, overhows, okay? Um, compound exercises basically work mu multiple muscle groups at once, all right? A lot of the time when you're training, you're going to be isolating muscle groups, right? That's really the point of doing all these different exercises is that they specifically target different muscle groups, okay? With a compound exercise, you're targeting muscle groups at multiple muscle groups at once, and they can be really, really efficient, and they can also help out with your um, coordination, which is good for us being, being hemis. You know, any way we can cross-train coordination into this is, is a big win for us. So, 
you've done your workout, uh, you were really smart and efficient about how you approached it, you already feel stronger. And now you want to cool down, okay? Um, you want to calm down your body, bring your heart rate down, and actually kind of calm down your mind a little bit too. Like after a really intense exercise, your, I don't know why my mind is kind of reeling a little bit, if I'm being totally honest. Um, and your cool down is going to really help you with that. Um, this is nice, you know, passive stretches, light yoga, you know, just general light exercise, okay? Let's let yourself calm down a little bit. Try not to just do a hard stop. Try, try to kind of ramp up with your warm-up, ramp down with your, with your cool down, you're going to feel a lot better um, as a result. So next up, we're going to talk about recovery, and uh, specifically active recovery. So remember at the start where I gave the example of, you know, of training your, your sword arm seven days a week and why that's a bad idea? Well, I'll kind of go in more in depth into why that's a bad idea now, and it's really straightforward. When you are exercising, when you are trying to gain strength, um, specifically when you are trying to gain strength, which is really, you know, what, what we're trying to do here when we're trying to build our power through explosive training, you know what I mean, which is really a lot of what we're looking at with our lower body conditioning. Um, you know, we're really going to be spending a lot of time damaging those muscle systems, okay? Those muscle systems need time to recover. Uh, that's how your muscles grow, <laughs> you know what I mean? Is actually in that recovery phase, all right? So you need to make sure that you're giving muscle groups time to recover. And this is why I really talk about the crate training mix and the cross training mix, okay? So that you can be doing, you know, your swordsmanship or your upper body, whatever, whatever you're doing, um, you know, X, uh, X amount of sessions a week, but you're also working on your lower body, specifically another X amount of sessions a little week, and you're giving those different parts of your body time to recover before you do hard training on them again. Uh, you're, it's the only way to see benefits. It's the only way to see gains, okay? Um, I mean, if you just go crazy and, and do crazy cardio every day, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you'll, you'll lose weight, okay? But you're not really going to be gaining muscle. You know what I mean? And, and that's really important to, to understand, in, in my opinion. And ultimately, if you're, if you're doing all this work and you're not setting yourself up to gain lean muscle mass, then it's, it's, it's a wasted effort. So, so we have to make sure that your body is getting a chance to recover. And specifically on your recovery days, right? Because I really want like whole recovery days here at the solid 24 hours. You know what I mean? Maybe even 48 hours. I don't know. Take the weekend off, right? Um, you're going to be um, doing a little bit of active recovery, okay? And what is that? Light yoga, stretches, going for a walk, okay? It's just getting circulation. That's all you're doing is getting circulation, you're feeding the muscles, you're getting the blood pumping, and you're going to feel a lot better, all right? Because you're going to have a delayed onset muscle soreness, and that's going to be, you know, the two days after you do a hard workout on a muscle group. That muscle group is going to be sore. That's good. That means that your body is repairing itself, okay? Um, a chemical is released. Um, as your body is repairing itself and that's what causes the delayed onset muscle soreness. So that soreness is a good thing. It tells you that your body is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But of course, don't get that confused with, um, you know, maybe, maybe pain you might have from swelling. Watch that on your right elbow. Watch that on, on your, um, you know, right knee, right hip. For me, I kind of have to watch out for that a little bit. If I, if I overtrain at all, I can get swelling in, in the joints. Um, you know, if you're hyperextending, if you're, if you're experiencing ligament damage, that's bad. But sore muscles is good, and it's the way. It is the way. All right. <laughs> So there's some beginner fitness, fitness concepts for you. Um, what's going to happen here is I'm going to be putting out a series where you're going to be able to put all of these concepts into action. Um, of course, this was our session zero so that you understand why we're training the way we're training and why we're taking breaks, why we're not just going for big runs, okay? And just to let you know that you know we're actually trying to create a very specific effect through very specific movements. I hope that you join me. I hope that you know you do all kinds of crazy jumps and who knows what else with me to try to uh, gain that explosive power. Um, so that hey, so that when you're when you're swinging that stick, when you're swinging that stick, you're moving forward so fast that you can't even believe it. He's just terrified. You know, he, he wants to run away. He won't run away. He'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Um, the follow-up to this video 
um, which I which I may or may not put out before before I start up um, the lower conditioning. We'll actually be talking about diet, all right? Because right now we've delayed, we've defined our concepts um, for how we're going to move. The other big big part of this is going to be what we're putting in our body, um, because what we're putting in our body is going to directly affect our outcome in a really major way. And uh, we can we can get ahead of this with a couple really simple concepts that I know have, have worked for me over the years. And I'll I'll talk to you about that in a in a separate video, okay? And uh, you're going to learn all about the uh, wonders of uh, of whey protein powder. And I promise. It's not douchey, it's super efficient and really good. Okay, talk soon guys, bye.